Okay, our next speaker is Prof Professor Heng from uh, Prairie View a and uh, He'll talk us, talk, tell us about generating big data okay. to enable deep learning for seismic inversion. So this is the work is we are uh, building a very uh, fundamental work to go to the next level to see how we can uh, integrate data science with geoscience or geophysics specifically to see uh, can we facilitate the uh, full, full waveform inversion of some kind of migration algorithm by using uh, the data science. Uh, so this is, a. Uh, but before we do that, this is actually the work we actually do this to see uh, how we can get data. So, so this is uh, not we get data, but instead of we, uh, how do we um, generate uh, some synthetic data. So we all know that data science has been playing a very important role everywhere, and, but how we can do that with uh, uh, energy sector, where especially uh, for geoscience, geophysics, there's a way we can utilize data science and to help, this, this is all the same, you probably see that a very successful story everywhere. Um, we like to see more work in the, uh, in the energy factor sector here. Um, so in energy sector, what do we have here? I was, we were thinking that there are some, some parts, certainly uh, uh, data science can play quite important role. For example, uh, very first one is uh, seismic imaging, where you know that how we can using this uh, all the, um, the this kind of uh, the wave equation and got the forward model, all the physics to do to create this uh, image in very, very sophisticated processing. And, and how we can using uh, uh, the deep learning. So there's something we like to do this here is for how we can have FWI, this algorithm. And another other thing, very obvious one is uh, interpretation like previous talk, and our previous work also been focused on this interpretation part, is where mostly we're using image pro imaging, uh, you know, recognition, image classification kind of algorithm from deep, non deep neural network. And that we can detect a lot of, uh, you know, uh, geological features, uh, like fault channel, saw, that many things can be done quite successfully, I think a lot of companies put this into production. Um, also, the reservoir, uh, there are some work. Uh, we had a very little, not, not really talking that part, but all your field also can be, can have some deep learning model be able to monitor and apply a lot of, uh, you know, machine learning there to be able to detect like an anomaly or event detections in case. So, um, so what we have here is uh, full waveform inversion so this is the case where we really focus on um, our research recently. And this is, the, you all know, that is a state of our solution for seismic imaging. And this is really a try to create the, um, the physics, right, physics uh, um, property. So that uh, for the underground. So you can see this is pretty much have a source and have a wave propagation all being com computed based on the wave equation. And then we can do the inversion based on the try to calculate the, the difference, the misfit between that observed data and your uh, synthetic data. So we try to study, uh, adjust this uh, model, this velocity model, and make this accurate, more and more accurate with this, uh, uh, the real data. So you can map in that. So this is a, a processing. We see that this workflow is you have this uh, go over and over again. So again, this is the goal of our research. We don't really present in this, in this talk about how do we do that. I will, I will show very, uh, a last one image to see some very initial result. But, but our goal is to say how we can, um, how, how we really study how data science can help in this case. So there are some related work which are very, very exciting to see those kind of work. One is this, uh, Alan, uh, for this early of this year, have this implementation with uh, FWI with TensorFlow. So this is interesting work. Instead of uh, create a neural network to help, but using this TensorFlow, uh, you know, the software to build FWI, which is quite interesting to see that he using that way because FWI in general is just a numerical optimization process, and you try to optimize that by calculating the gradients. So that's it's, it's there a lot of similarity there, although there are some differences as well, but he, he can actually demonstrate there's a, possible, a possibility that actually can use TensorFlow to implement FWI, which is very interesting to think about that. 
Um, and this is some work mostly related to this section from, from friends from, from Shaw. And they actually created this uh, from this, this year, early this year, leading edge paper. And they actually trained this uh, tomography operator, which trained this really uh, inversion of op uh, tomography operator by replaced completely with a you know, neural network. Okay, that is a very interesting thing to do. And he actually created this uh, feature and uh, trained the model with some ground truth uh, velocity model. So that is uh, um, very interesting. And at the end, they have, uh, they have, have just recorded data. You have the raw data. They'll be using this uh, neural, neural network. You'll be able to get a velocity model, which is uh, somehow showing this uh, paper is a very interesting and uh, encouraging result. Uh, although the question here is still remain here, is uh, can, from research perspective, really can a data-driven model, as we see data science, all we create is, is, a, is a data science, it's a data-driven model, which can that really be used to replace a physical solution, okay? So many things we know is a physical-based solution, uh, like this example. Oh, what's the benefit if that does so, okay? So uh, this is a, a just fundamental research question. It's not just to see uh, whether it's, it's a, we, we probably need more examples or theoretical study to prove or disapprove it. Um, but if it's possible to do so, um, what is uh, how big the data set we need to train a, you know, a feasible, uh, a practical model to which can replace a, a physical solution, okay? So that is something I think are very interesting to study that. So how big is big enough? So you see the physical model, typically you don't need a lot of data, right? What you need is figure out the equation. Once you figure out equation, you need the numerical method to be able to solve that equation. So that once you, you find out this works, it works everywhere, right? So, um, but data science, typically the other way, is statistical model. It's a statistical approach. You know, all you know is it depends on data, right? If you got bad data, you got bad model. It just, just, yeah, it just learn from the data itself, which uh, in some cases is very, very useful because once you don't have any physical model, this is uh, the one that you can rely on, very useful to you. But if you already have a physical model, um, can that still be used? Or can we still use that to do so? But and then the question is, how big data we, can, we need to train uh, such a model? Okay, so it's, uh, you, you can understand, uh, you know, say, just say, because we learn from data, the so data has to be big enough, right? Contain all the features we need so that you can, you can really apply this model to real data set. So that is something we don't have. I know it's uh, from industry, probably you can have a lot of data set to play with, but then, how do you get this, this such model is, uh, is really a, a research obstacle for us. So what we, what we try and propose to do actually here is we try to rely on this uh, uh, generative advers adversarial network. You know, this is uh, uh, called GAN, that network. It's, this is a very interesting network, has been pro you know, uh, implemented from 2014. And this is something that can using a some data, you know, a very random uh, data set, you can create a very different data set. It's like a uh, reversed operation of a CN, you know, neural network. You go opposite direction. Um, so, so this case is very interesting. For example, in this case, you show there, so you have a scratch of a, a cat, you can get a very, you know, real cat based on through the network, right? Or this is even more interesting here is say, okay, if I have a different person, uh, can we have one man minus a man plus women, what we can have, right? So, so it's very interesting to see you mix, once you, you extract different features from the image, can we combine them and create new? So that's something I think that they give a, a possibility that we may have a, a new way to generate data we, we can use. So this is a, a 2014 paper, actually this one is, it's just really depend on, uh, based on the game, gaming theory, where you have one called the generator, one called discriminator, right? One you try to generate a fake data, while the other one try to uh, discriminate, to find out is the fake or true. 
So then your objective functions be, become, become two. One is uh, try to minimize, okay, how we can always can dis discriminate, right? We always can find the true or false, but also another one, the generator always try to generate rear, like try to uh, fool such discriminator. So you always got, you know, when you generate her, the discriminator think, oh, this is true, this is real data. So they kind of go, going back and forth, and then they kind of learn from each other and actually got very interesting things. So, so this is, uh, we adopt the DC GAN, which is a deep convolution and GAN neural network here is try to, to do this work because this has better st stability for the training itself. So we was asking ourselves, oh, okay, if we can add one man to another man, man as a woman, or oh, something we can you know, add together what we can become, then what if we're adding some features like from geological perspective, what we have, like say we start with my muscle model, what can we can add some overthrust or plus some sword, or plus some uh, anti, anti I'm sorry. And that, that sense, oh, we, we can make it together. Can we have something more uh, model that would be more realistic, which we cannot get from the real world, and then we can, we can use that for our training. So that's what we have some experiment did was try to say, okay, what if we do the learn just let's make data itself. Uh, another way we try to generate is, is a velocity model. You know, velocity model is where we can start with uh, FWI. So, um, so this is some image we showed that uh, we learn from, uh, from generate from this, uh, uh, this post stack image. You see that it's, it, it generates a lot of interesting things. It's uh, like, uh, it looks like, you know, seismic. I don't know just uh, what we can call that. Um, and so this is like a not very good shape of dome, but I see this kind of uh, interesting sense, I can see the feature there. But the interesting thing, they are generated by this uh, GAN uh, network. Not, not just coming from, it's learned from real data. This is an interesting thing, you can learn from real data and then generate a lot of different things, could be combine them together. Um, what interesting more to me is this uh, uh, velocity model of generation because that is what we need for FWI, so we have a, this is the first one we have is we create a, um, a portion from the synthetic velocity models we have. And then we got to train those models. See, we can, can learn the features. So actually, this was generated. Look to me, it's still a lot of layers. Uh, though, I know, this is just a, remember, this is a very small portion of the whole image, not the entire image, very small portion. It's 128 by 128. So that is, uh, um, you know, we can see a lot of layers, and these layers, uh, we can see that can be uh, something you can use for represent different uh, velocities. Um, and uh, this is, uh, we got a little bigger, and this is, we actually try to learn entire you know, uh, velocity model we, we generated, that's just some other synthetic velocity model we use for training this network. And this is, uh, we have a lot of zig, zigzag lines, which we just, because uh, the, the, the model, the, the synthetic data we have is not very uh, realistic, obviously, just because we wrote, we wrote just a MATLAB code to generate that. So, but it's actually interesting to see that this GAN is able to capture those high frequencies and data that be able to, to reproduce them, to generate on this new image. So again, this is all fake image, but this generated by the bad GAN. So, uh, so this is another one. We have a lot of faults we put into this, and then we generate, we create the faults, okay? So that is, uh, so and then we say, okay, can GAN capture the fault feature here? So again, this is uh, not that realistic, I see, but we actually can capture some kind of sharp, you know, faults happening built by, by the GAN itself. So it's, it's, it's interesting to me when you see that kind of image there. Um, again, there are a lot of things that can be improved, certainly, that uh, this is a, a loss function, you see that. This is a, this is a discriminator uh, loss function, you see that, keep bumping, bump, this one is a generator, uh, it doesn't really go converge, but at a certain time it's got to go up, you know, that's... Uh, one thing you can see, they actually try to uh, compete to each other, so that's what you see that. Okay, so this is uh, one thing I was to show that is for the FWI case. In this case, we did it using the um, 
machine learning here, deep learning network, building the FWI workflow. So that's interesting to me is, uh, it's a very, very initial result, I want to show that. This is a uh, FWI result, it's just some uh, horizontal reflectors here. And you can see if we don't have a lot of uh, receivers here, and those boundary part is not to be illuminated, it's not easy to see that. But interesting see if we use deep learning network to reconstruct it, you can see that those are pretty clearly uh, shown, uh, you know, displayed for, for this, uh, from this deep learning based risk construction processing. So which make it very interesting. So I will present more about this work next week on SEG and there's HPC theater. Uh, if you are interested, I would like to discuss more about this. So um, this, this is something we like to say. The conclusion for this is we using this uh, generative adversary, adversary network where it's provide a solution to generate a lot of synthetic data. So which we think this could be a, a you know uh, approach for us to to do this uh, deep learning data science research uh, since the data is number one thing we need. And this is uh, we we like to see if that can lead into better performance in the FWI processing. Yep. Thank you very much. Open to questions. We have a couple of minutes for questions. Hi, very interesting talk. So uh, that many SEG uh, synthetic data, you plan to use uh, all the synthetic data available to do the training? Yes, certainly we like to do that. Yes, so the SEG, the same data set is something we just discussed that we need to get more about this real uh, velocity models so that we can, we can have it to train this, this one. So that the goal is to say we can get more uh, you know, veracity, veracity, so there are many, many other things we come up with that. Yes. Thanks. Yep. I have a question. So, the, the, if I'm thinking of like uh, ray tracing, the more time you spend computationally, the better uh, model you're going to get. The more time you have the computer work on simulating the physics of the wave propagation, you'll get more detail. Yeah. How, how do you decide how much time to spend doing that? I mean, because you could do it to arbitrary uh, precision. So I, I think that is the goal for the research is say, can we uh, improve the performance both in the speed or accuracy that, you know, the retracing, like you said, takes really significant time, right, to, to compute that. So can we, you know, have a, a model be able to help such the long time computation there? So. Um, I think this is also the challenge for doing this work is that, you know, uh, because the ray tracing, every time we take a significant time to compute that, when you try to do the neural network training, which take another very long, long, you know, processing uh, iterations. So that's make this very challenging to go many, many iterations. So that is uh, we need using the, as many power, as much power as possible, you're running on the cluster, GPUs, all things together, possibly make the training be feasible. But once it's done, I think it will be probably beneficial from, from that because the goal is try to reduce the, when you try to do the real data. So let me put it this way. Uh, do you want to spend more time uh, on the neural networks or do you want to spend more time generating data? What, what, what's your bottleneck? Uh, you, you mean you talk about the training or talk about the, uh, the training time? Yeah, we, if you... Are you, are you, do you feel like you, don't, you need more time to generate the data, or do you feel like you, you need more time to use the neural networks on the data that's been trained? Yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much time for the generation part, see that, you know, because once we generate a sufficient data set, we want to reuse them, right? So that's certainly we don't want to do, spend that much time. Certainly the training itself would be the big chunk of the computing resources to spend on that, yeah. Thank you much. Thank <laughs> you.